Forests once covered the dunescape along the eastern shore of Lake Michigan, with a canopy thick and green. Here stood the trees that built the cities of pioneer America. The trees were so plentiful back in the 19th century that no one thought the forests would ever thin out. People migrated here to work with wood. Lumberjacks, millers, carpenters, and craftsmen. Their industry created riches and a reputation that circled the globe. But over time, much of the woodland was devoured. These were modest and careful people, but they did not think broadly about the world beyond their boundaries. And surely, they did not expect to run short of wood. By nature and immigrant inclination, they were motivated more by saving for the next generation than by fame or fortune. Not all the trees that were harvested were lost to the rising new cities of industrial America. Some descended to the bottom of Lake Michigan itself, en route from forest to lumber mill. Here they were preserved in the icy waters for later generations to discover. By happenstance or providence, the early woodsmen of West Michigan enabled an organic twist on carbon saving for future craftsmen to enjoy. The Hayworth family arrived in West Michigan following an unusual and circuitous route for pioneer Americans from Iowa via Nebraska and Colorado. But once here, they felt at home among hard-working craftsmen who built their community with their own hands. Just as his father had started out by building the homestead where the family could be raised, G.W. Hayworth built his own house and then his business from the ground up. To supplement his modest salary as an industrial arts teacher at Holland High School, G.W. began fashioning toys and small product displays in his basement workshop. Later he expanded to his garage where he built larger and more elaborate product displays. Eventually, with seed money from his father, G.W. hired his first part-time helpers, launching modern products where they manufactured planters room dividers, classroom furniture, and ultimately, office partitions. The success of this startup business encouraged GW to abandon his teaching career, but he never stopped being an educator and encourager. He modeled the ideal of continuous improvement and lifelong learning, always searching for that nugget of knowledge or better method that would strengthen his company. His enterprise also grew by giving his customers the quality and service you see only when a good team works in harmony. From the early days, GW envisioned a family business, not just by hiring and encouraging his son Dick to explore and fulfill his potential, but also by treating his team, his employees, as if they were family members too. The Hayworths often reminded admirers through the years that members built the business, indeed made it a true family business. In fact, members is what people who work for Hayworth always have been called. As the business evolved and took on the family name, GW prepared for a natural transition, seeking to prevent the succession issues that can destroy a family business, he transferred ownership to his children and promoted his son to the company's leadership. This all happened when Dick was still in his 30s, but looking back, it all seems perfectly natural. In fact, that natural progression now extends to a third generation, with Dick's son Matthew carrying forward the family tradition and vision in the chairman's office. From craftsman, to engineer, to marketer, the leadership gifts of the family fit comfortably in the Hayworth culture that continues to evolve as the business grows from the ground up, true to its roots. After all, 
What business feels more authentic and organic than a healthy family business? Like his father, Dick Hayworth was a hands-on team player. More reserved, perhaps, but even more inventive. It was his first major design success that sparked the next era of growth for the business. Not surprisingly, it evolved from his father's original business in movable walls and partitions. Dick devised a way to pre-wire the partitions from within a simple yet radical step that made complete sense to clients and drew the attention of competitors as well. Dick's invention was an early expression of organic principles applied to interior design. It was furniture designed from the inside out and it was destined to have a far-reaching impact on the business and in fact the entire industry. Competitors who copied the design eventually paid for the privilege and thus helped fund Hayworth's continued growth. Hayworth's network of dealers and customers grew and strengthened as it began to develop a broader design point of view. Hayworth brought in talented outside designers quietly to work collaboratively and creatively with designers inside the company. Together, they produced designs with inherent functional purpose. Initially, the opinion leaders of interior design failed to recognize this fundamental strength at Hayworth, expressed as it was in the most functional element of space division, an office partition. But eventually, they would come to see that design from the inside out was, in its own way, just as form follows function, a pure and pragmatic approach to design. Building on its success with furniture systems in America's new office layouts, Hayworth's visionary leaders sought growth in new markets, new types of furniture, and new geographic areas. It was in this period that the company evolved organically with the help of acquisition. It could now offer furniture that integrated all around the office. Floors and walls, desks and case goods, seating, and accessories. As it evolved internationally, Hayworth acquired critical new insights from around the globe. The central idea was that with cultures, as with workspaces, all the parts could fit together to make an organic whole. So ergonomists worked with inside designers to create a portfolio of parts that fit beautifully and thoughtfully together. Whether made in North America, or Asia, or Europe. At the same time, there arrived in West Michigan a youthful Italian who would become chief executive. Back in Bologna, Franco Bianchi had, with his European colleagues, forecast the truly adaptable workspace with the Tutti concept. Here in West Michigan, Hayworth members had built the ideal base on which to realize its potential. The Hayworth tradition of design from within and the evolution of furniture designs that integrated one with another. Each element thoughtfully conceived, elegant and adaptable. Each element appropriate and functional by itself, but even better in a seamless combination with the rest. A wholeness reflecting simplicity, harmony, flexibility, and beauty. Anyone who grew up in the depression of the 1920s and 30s knew the value of thrift. Now, as the world faced another daunting challenge in the new century, climate change, Hayworth members had further cause to consider the matter of waste. 
Any socially responsible company involved in building and manufacturing was required to be doubly concerned with the environmental impact of their industry. Consider, for example, the once dense woodlands along Lake Michigan and how they had thinned out over the centuries. Naturally, Hayworth addressed these green issues from the inside out, exploring sustainability from its very roots comprehensively. All responsible companies in the industry had bought into the concept of sustainable products and processes, but Hayworth went deeper, beyond energy management, zero waste in emissions, green transportation, and LEED certified buildings. Where competitors earnestly discussed the merits of sustainability in their showrooms, only Hayworth built showrooms to LEED standards. And then Hayworth went one major step further by converting integrated workspaces into truly adaptable workspaces. Hayworth designers enabled customers to reuse their furniture and walls through many more office changes, over 50% more. In the wasteful days of the consumer society, manufacturers thrived on the business strategy of built-in obsolescence. Today at Hayworth, there's a new principle of doing business built on the founder's waste not, want not philosophy. Built-in adaptability. More than just sustainable, this is the organic workspace. In the early years, G.W. Hayworth built his business by supplying partitions direct to customers, the firms who actually used them, and through dealers who helped service them. Later, as Dick's team designed more sophisticated furniture and more complete workspaces, their work became noted and then recommended by architects and designers who advised the customers. Hayworth soon realized that if its evolving workspace vision were to deliver on its promise, all stakeholders would need to sit around the same table and share their best thinking about the future and about the whole system of delivering corporate real estate. Architect and designer, developer and tenant, and the workspace provider. To cultivate a truly collaborative conversation, the table would be round. In its central role in the planning debate, Hayworth brought something extra to the table, its own original research. For over a decade, Hayworth's own cognitive psychologists, environmental psychologists, ergonomists, and strategists had been deeply engaged with leading academic institutes and an array of the world's foremost thinkers. The focus for these experts, to bring science and art together in real-world applications for the future workspace. This work had been going on quietly for some time, and now Hayworth's workspace knowledge was a deep well from which clients and members alike could draw sustenance. It was time for its experts' conclusions to be made public. These expert views would now be shared on the future of work and the influence of space. It was time to unveil the organic workspace. Nearly a century ago, before G.W. Hayworth was enrolled in school, Lewis Sullivan articulated the guiding principle of modern design and organic architecture in his declaration, Form Ever Follows Function. Much later, Dick Hayworth revealed the truth of this maxim through a simple, integrated partition system, pre-wired from within. Now the Hayworth design team was ready to share with architects and developers, dealers and customers, the future of the organic workspace. In the round, and in more aesthetically pleasing interiors than Hayworth had ever made. Until now, showrooms around the world had been designed to show how Hayworth had evolved. Elegant, integrated, sustainable, adaptable, but showrooms nonetheless. Until now, 
they'd been unable to show how the workspace of the future would unfold for the people who would ultimately benefit from it. After all, Hayworth was a company built by people, its members, from the ground up. Members who created furniture and then workspaces designed for people from the inside out. All that remained was for Hayworth to reveal what this evolution, this organic approach, could mean for people at work in the years ahead. Spring 2008. An appropriate season to share a new beginning and an appropriate year, Hayworth's 60th anniversary, to celebrate the company's evolving vision. Hayworth members and their families gather in a stunning new landmark building to open the company's new offices. Designers and clients, intrigued, come to West Michigan, many for the first time, and are joined by journalists from around the world to witness the unveiling of something more than a new corporate headquarters. Many years in the planning, Hayworth's moment has finally arrived. All the company's research on future workplace needs and trends is being applied so that buildings and offices become instruments of cultural harmony. All its designers and architects' ingenuity is brought to bear on elegant, integrated workspaces where organizations can evolve and grow. All the principles of sustainability endorsed by Hayworth are being put into practice. 98% of the old headquarters building has been recycled. Benchmarks for LEED Gold certification are achieved. And above all, the furniture and spaces have been designed to adapt to organizational change in years ahead for the further evolution of Hayworth's family business and for the ongoing inspiration of Hayworth's members as well. At the very heart of Hayworth today, Amid shimmering terrazzo and panels of glass stands a three-story wall of timber, an ever-present reminder of the company's roots. The hand-finished care of the craftsmen is cherished here still, ingrained deeply in the company's culture, beginning from the ground up, from the inside out, integrated, adaptable beautiful individual parts that function even better when placed in the context of the collective whole. For generation upon generation, Hayworth and its members have chosen, without flash or fanfare, to do the right things for the right motives. This wall, fashioned from logs salvaged from the cool, dark depths of Lake Michigan, is a striking emblem of the company's history and values and a spirited symbol of the company's ever-evolving vision of sustainable and organic workspace.